Oh, two of my favorite characters. So, these are our new underclassmen, huh? Yep. They've got a different set of hoops to jump through than we did, though. I'm just happy all our work's paying off. I'd hate to have put in a year's worth of effort for nothing. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Wait, when did you do any work? You were just slacking off the whole time. <laughs> Says the master slacker. Still, looks like Elisa's got some stiff competition. Quite a bevy of beauties they've got there. And I'm looking forward to getting intimately acquainted with each and every one of them. We got some lesbian action going on in this game. Oh, you know one of them? Err, uh, wait. No, no, not these ones too. Stop flirting with every damn girl you lay eyes on. Do you have any idea how many guys at this school have gotten their hearts broken because of your libido? <laughs> did did you just sneer at me? Oh, you did, didn't you? Come on now, no fighting you two. Well, look who finally made it. Nice work, you two. You got our little chickadees all sorted out, I take it? Yep, they're all bright-eyed and ready to go. So from here on out, we're gonna have to give it all we've got to support this fledgling class. <laughs> now you sound the part of the student council president. So she's the student council president. Yes, she's going all in. Well, they'd be in for a pretty rough time if we didn't help out a little. At least to start with, anyway. Everything's ready over there, right? You betcha. Just like the instructor asked. Can't help but feel a little sorry for them, though. Same here. They've got no idea what they're being tossed into. Oh, boy. The class they've been picked for didn't even exist before this year. So it's a new class. Guess all we can do is watch and see what they're made of, right? I'll be explaining a little things later on. Not now, because more cutscene. This cutscene is really long, by the way, guys. This is going to be a really story-heavy game. But it's really interesting. It picks up, it picks up really fast. It's kind of slow at the beginning, but it picks up really fast, and you just want to know more and more and more. The name's Sarah Valestine. I'm the instructor in charge of Class 7, which means you get the pleasure of seeing me all year. Oh, baby, I can see you all year long and never get tired. Glad to finally meet you. Wait. Class seven? What, uh, us? I'm not sure I understand. I wasn't told anything about this at enrollment. Excuse me, Instructor Sarah? I was under the impression that there were only five classes at this academy, and that students were split among them based on their social class and home region. Right you are, Miss Top Scorer on the Thor's entrance exam. Oh, okay. Jeez. Students in each year are divided into five classes, two for the nobility and three for commoners. And it's been that way for ages, right up through last year. But this year, we decided to shake things up a little. Wh what do you... We now have a sixth class. Fittingly titled, Class 7. And in Class 7, we recognize no distinction between nobles and commoners. So, there are five classes, this is the sixth class, and it's called Class 7. What? The fuck? Wait, you just jumped straight from five to seven? Y you're really putting nobles and commoners in the same class? <laughs> this must be some kind of joke! 
And why is this the first I've heard of it? Well, uh... Um... Who are you again? <laughs> I love this because you're so unimportant that nobody remembers your name. Machias Regnitz. And with all due respect, Instructor, it's ludicrous to intermix nobles and commoners like this! Says who? Must I be forced to spend my next two years shoulder to shoulder with those arrogant, stuck-up hedonists? Uh, you do know I'm not the one who made the decision, right? Besides, what's the big deal anyway? You're all kids. Can't you all just get along or something? Is it just get along? <laughs> And how would you propose we do that? <laughs> what are you looking at? Jeez, we got a badass over here. Oh, nothing much. I just find the irony of your behavior rather humorous. Is that so? It seems the scion of some noble house has left the comfort of his mansion to grace the unwashed masses with his wisdom. Please, my lord, do share your esteemed name with us so I can give you all the respect you deserve. Eusis Alborea. Not that I'd expect the name of an arrogant, stuck-up hedonist to lodge itself in that hard head of yours. He's from one of the four great houses. The son of Duke Alborea, Lord of the Kreutzen province in the southeast. Well, you don't get much more noble than that. Interesting. I'd heard the rumors. <sighs> Someone's bored. Do, do you expect me to be impressed? Your family lineage means nothing to me. Congratulations. I'll never bend my knee to the likes of- Okay, okay, that's enough. I'm sure a couple of you have a few grievances, but now's not the time. I'll hear your complaints later. Right now, you've got your orienteering exercise, and far be it for me to keep you from our fun little icebreaker. <sighs> you mentioned this orienteering exercise earlier? What exactly does that involve? It's a form of outdoor competition, isn't it? Something like a cross between a map reading exercise and a scavenger. Is that why they asked us to hand over our weapons at the gate? Nothing gets by you, does it? Why are you backstepping? Why are you close to a button? Why are you singing? But I don't want to spoil the fun, so let's get started, shall we? Uh, let's not press that, please. You're a good girl, right? Or not. What? Fuck you. <gasps> oh, crap. What? Well then. <sighs> Come on, Fee. No cheating. You're going with them and that's that. What's the point in having an icebreaker if you don't make a couple of new friends? <sighs> Lame. out from under us I can't believe I fell for such an obvious trap does this mean there's a series of catacombs beneath the school grounds then what does that woman think she's playing at <sighs> oh, I 
thought my heart was gonna jump out of my chest. Hey, Reen, are you... Okay... <laughs> Easy now. As where she can see them. That's very important. When something like that happens... What happened? Place her hands when she can see them. So she knows you're not groping her. Huh? <laughs> um... Well, this is a bit awkward. You know what's more awkward? You talking into her tits. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Still, I'm just glad you're okay. That's what's really important here, right? That slow motion head movement. <laughs> wow, it's just not your day, is it? Well, now that I've hit the bottom, things can only improve. I hope. What is this place anyway? I was wondering the same thing. We should check out those tape. What? Huh? Is this? It's coming from the devices we received with the Academy Guidebook. It seems to be some sort of portable ornament. Right, you are. These handy little devices are a special kind of battle orbit. Is that Miss Valestine? So these devices have built-in communications functionality then? Wait, don't tell me these things. New model battle orbits made through a partnership between the Epstein Foundation and Reinford Company. Newly made fifth generation battle ornaments, in fact. They're called Arcus units. Arcus. So these are battle ornaments. Another plane. Fat part of living near an airport. That means they'll allow us to use arts, right? Sure will. Just set a quartz into one of its slots, and you can use arts all the live long day. Which is why I've prepared enough quartz for each and every one of you. The weapons you brought are all here too. Each packaged neatly along a little box containing the quartz. Find yours and try setting the quartz into your Arcus. Hmm. I suppose it can't hurt to try. I guess everybody's just gonna pick one up. <sighs> what is this woman thinking? I don't know. What is she thinking? <sighs> what is Yusus thinking? Annoyed at Machius? Let's see. Mine is... Oh, I see mine over there. Let me just go grab it, okay? I'm gonna go grab mine and a little quartz thingy. And with this, I obtain everything of the new game plus. What's and now this? she's calling me again, I think. That's called a master quartz. Yep. If you set that into the large slot in the center of your Arcus, you'll be able to use arts. Go on, give it a try. Of 
quartz can be set in the orbit section of the camp menu. You press obviously triangle and why am I going there? Orbit. Quartz. And here you equip it. This is the one he starts with. Force. But I started with this one. I had this one in my last playthrough. True, true, true. Dude, should I? I mean, I think it's better overall. I don't know. Hmm. I'm gonna see and see. I'll pick it. And I will pick... Where is it? This one. It's ridiculous. It's really, really good. And before I do anything else, I am going to equip the best accessories. Why? Because I can. Might be a little cheap, but I want to try and get things over like really quickly. Stage outfit, rings pajamas, ring shirt. Really? Ring sleeveless shirt. Okay, it's basically without the uniform. With the red thing. The red jacket. Cutscene! <sighs> what in the world? light means that you've successfully synchronized with your Arcus. Congratulations! Now you can use art as much as you want. These Arcus units have plenty more nifty features. But I wouldn't want to bombard you with too much info all at once. So, well, anyway, since you've got your Arcus all set up and ready to go, here's... When you step through that door, You'll be in an underground testing area. Basically, it's a dungeon. It's pretty large and full of twists and turns. I'd almost guarantee you'll get lost at least once. But when you find the exit, you'll be able to return to the first floor of this old schoolhouse. I mean, it's a pretty simple dungeon. It's there not that hard. monsters wandering around, though, so don't let your guard down, even for a moment. With all that said, let's commence our special orienteering exercise. Your objective is to make your way through this area and back to the surface. Make it back in one piece and I'll be happy to field any complaints you might have. If you make it back safely, I might even give you a kiss. Free of charge. On the cheek, of course. Aww. Well, I'll take the free kiss, I guess. I don't care. Um, I don't think she's joking. <laughs> and just where do you think you're going? Were you planning to wander off on your own without saying anything? Does it matter? I have no interest in becoming friends with anyone here. And I'm surprised that you, of all people, give a damn what I... Unless you've suddenly decided you do want to keep company with one of those stuck-up hedonists, after all. Still, if you're afraid of the monsters, I suppose I could accompany you. After all, what kind of Erebonian noble would I be if I didn't have at least some degree of prowess with a sword? And noblesse oblige dictates that it's my sacred duty to protect powerless commoners such as yourself. Nobody's asking your High Excellency to deign to help us! If that's how you're gonna be, I'll just find my way out of here before you! I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself without some relic of an outdated class that's still dragging me down! Jesus. Well, it's useless, but Jesus. <laughs> that attitude. Spoiled brat. Both of them. Uh, 
Um... Uh, what should we do? The only thing we can do. We should begin exploring these ruins ourselves. I believe it would be prudent to remain in small groups, however. Would the two of you have any objections to accompanying me? Oh, no, that's fine. It would be a huge help, actually. And you're welcome to join us as... Well... I suppose that's a no. Perhaps we'll run into her along the way, and she can join us then. So? Shall we be off? I'm certain you gentlemen will be fine, but do take care. Okay. If you'll excuse us, please. Huh. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> nah, it's such a hot first impression there, huh? You can say that again. I'll have to clear things up with her later. Anyway, how do you guys want to do this? Should the three of us stick together too? Sounds good to me. I'd get pretty anxious wandering around a place like this alone. No objections here. I'd be happy to accompany you. There we go. Sure we're gonna start. Oh, but before, obviously, a little introduction to their weapons. And themselves, obviously. I don't believe I've introduced myself yet. My name is Gaius Warzel. I just arrived in the Empire, so any help you can offer would be much appreciated. Oh, so you're from abroad. <laughs> I've been wondering. My name's Reen Schwarzer. It's nice to meet you. I'm Elliot Craig. So, you fight with them. Of course. Why else would I be carrying it? It's a spear, but it has that odd cross-shaped head. It looks kind of... awesome. Think of it as combining the best parts of a spear and a poleaxe. I was pretty handy with it back home. But speaking of weapons, I have to say, yours looks pretty unique. Oh, this thing. Is it a staff? Wait, no, it's an orbment, isn't it? Both, actually. It's an orbital staff. The tech is pretty recent. This one's still a prototype, more or less. Back during enrollment, they told me I had some aptitude for it, so when it came time to choose, I just sort of ran with it. Interesting. I've never seen anything like it before. Can't say I have either. They're still in development, apparently, so there aren't too many around just yet. But that said, I'm curious about what you've got there, Reen. Oh, my sword? I don't know yeah, why all this presentation... What kind of sword is it? It's different from the kinds of swords I thought the people in the Empire used, though. It's an Eastern style of saber called Itachi. Any way you slice it, though, it's basically a longsword. Wow, that's one beautiful blade. I want to buy it. I want to have it in my collection. The craftsmanship looks exceptional. They're renowned for the layering of their steel and the sharpness of their edge. Truth be told, though, I'm still a little hesitant to be swinging around something this dangerous. Seriously? If that's what hesitant looks like, I'll bet confidence will make you unstoppable. Well, you sound like a good guy to have around when the going gets tough. Speaking of which, I think we've been standing around long enough. We should really be getting ourselves into trouble. I think I can manage that. You saw it yourselves. Trouble has a way of dropping in on me. Let's take it slow and steady, though. We need to adapt to each other's fighting styles to really gel as a team. Got it. Now with two new party members, let's start our adventure. We are going to equip them with some really good things. So they are they hit hard too. 
and not be left behind. I think I need, yeah. It switches it out. Okay, so let's get going. First things first. Yikes! A monster! Huh, never seen this kind before. It looks like a flying feline. Careful, everyone. Whatever. It spots me. You can press X to get a surprise attack from behind. From the front, it doesn't work. Okay, first things first. Be sure to... Where is it? Battle scope. These things. This is the first time and only time you will have to do so. So please remember to do it. It's very important to get your battle book filled up to get a trophy or achievement, whichever you want to call it. I'm just going to one hit everything because I'm so strong. Double kitty kick, you miss. Counter, die. Okay, it's safe for now. When they miss or you miss, you get countered, so keep that in mind. Another cutscene. Please tell me there aren't more of those things lurking around here. I hate to tell you, but I can sense more further in. Anyway, let's just stay alert. You can now access active voice and monster guide sections of the notebook. Up to 50 active voice messages are automatically recorded in the active voice section and can be replayed at will. Monsters that have been fought will automatically be recorded in the monster guide and be referenced at will. Maybe referenced at will. No. Both can be accessed via the select button or by choosing note and selecting the relevant tab from the camp menu. Okay. Also, break these pots. They sometimes contain these little shiny things, which are good items and will help you out er, a lot. Er, a lot. Okay, these are a few of the chests that are here, so come get them. Epif or Epif, whatever the name is. That's kind of like the money. Okay, obviously, you can equip people, not just your own party member. You can just, uh, I don't know, find whatever and just put it. And what do I put? Where is it? Let's put this. And you, let's put something, obviously, of grass. Uh, hmm. I guess we'll put that one in the meantime. Uh, let's keep moving forward. This is what I explained earlier. But this will give you a better explanation. Orbane charging stations like this are often found left behind by some kindly explorer in particularly dangerous areas. If you encounter one, walk up to it and press the X button. Then select rest and restore your HP and EP of all party members. I don't know if they're talking or not. And now we rest. And recover, obviously. And we keep moving forward. So if worse comes to worst. I should just be able to run up and smack it. Wow, well, really? I can see that thing coming in handy. Well, we're counting on you to lead the charge then. Heh, 
Here goes nothing. Yes, horrible staff users. They can hit monsters like this with their attack and it does the same thing as if it were a magic attack. But since I'm really OP, you should use arts though. Like for real. Like for real. Like, you know. You should use arts because it's gonna do a lot. And fire arts are gonna do a lot, a lot, a lot to this. But since I'm OP, I can just do this. Alright. Because of the items. My turn. Yeah. I'm still level, you know, low level, but still. Right, let's keep going. If I was high level, this would have been just massacre. More than it is. What? I'm starting to lose my sense of direction down here. Yeah, gotta make sure we're not going in circles. Okay, we keep moving now. And get this thing, oh boy. This thing. This gives a lot of EXP though. An insectoid monster, huh? Looks like that shell can take a real beating. Might be pretty tough to take down. Agreed. We'll have to keep our wits about us against this one. We should probably give it everything we've got. Arts and crafts included. And see what works best. Yes, yes you should. But since I have my endgame items, I'm just gonna part- oh boy. Let me just skip all these turns. This is gonna take long if I don't. And they're lining up perfectly. Sweet. Look at that, all four. There. And dead. All the overkills. And with his cru- I can't do crafts. Uh, great. Pop. You can press start to skip, obviously. I got hit, okay. Okay, that's better. No damage. Oh, we did it! Look at all the that EXP they gave. Woo -hoo. I love those monsters. But it takes a long time at the beginning. You'd probably end up like that. <sighs> Elliot, are you okay? I don't see any obvious injuries. I I'm okay. I was just so relieved the fight was over. The strength kind of just left my legs. I'm amazed how calm you two are. You don't seem tired or worried or anything. I guess I'm just used to fighting monsters like these. You need a hand? N no, I'll be fine. It was just a momentary and there. Look out! Elliot! What? Huh? Well, he can see it. You're seeing it. Dodge it. <clears throat> You had plenty of time to dodge it, and you're just standing there. Er? What the? What? Jesus, overkill much? Looks like I made it just in time. Thank Edios for that. Oh, it's you! You said your name was. Machias, right? That's right. I came to realize that I shouldn't have just stormed off like I did. I let that arrogant noble goad me into losing my composure, acting on impulse. So I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I acted foolishly, and I hope you can forgive me for it. No sweat. Water under the bridge. Yeah, we all have moments when we say or do things we regret. That's human nature for you. Oh, and thanks for saving me, by the way. I'm just glad I happened to be passing by. After I'd cooled my head, I decided to retrace my steps, and... There you are. Is it just the three of you here? 
Yeah, we stood around talking for a while, so the others are probably ahead of us at this point. I don't think there's any reason to go back any farther. I can't imagine you'll find anyone there. I see. Uh, I... I don't suppose you'd mind if I came with you, would you? I'm reasonably skilled with a gun, so you might find it useful having me along. Sure thing. Yes. Welcome aboard. Yes, Machias is pretty good. He's really decent at the early levels. He deals a ton of damage. But compared to us now, he does nothing. My name's Rain Schwarzer. I'm Elliot Craig. It's nice to meet you. My name is Guy Warzel. It's a pleasure. The pleasure's mine, I assure you. My name is Machias Regnitz. Well, now you seem nice. Could... Could I ask you what social class you each belong to? I realize how that must sound, uh, considering my recent outburst. You sounded like a douchebag just now. But please, don't take it personally. I'm simply curious to know who I'm associating with. Um, well, both my parents are commoners. Likewise. Though my homeland has no class system to begin with. So you're from abroad, then? What about you, Reen? Well... Mm -hmm. Let's just say I haven't got a drop of noble blood in my veins. So I guess we're all in equal standing here. Well, now that's a relief. We should probably get moving, then. I'm somewhat concerned about the girls, as you might imagine. I'd feel much better if we were around to help if they wound up in danger. Yeah, I suppose there's strength in numbers. All right, let's go. Machias has joined the party. Machias has abilities that can lower the enemy's defenses, which is really good at this point of the game. It's beginning, so having that would help incredibly. What's a place like this even doing on the school grounds? Yeah, who puts a giant trap door in a campus building? Okay, nothing there to break. What is this feline doing? Looking at the wall. Let's see. Mm. Nothing to break. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Nothing in there. Now keep moving forward. Which we should. Oh, cutscene, I forgot. Time to be quiet and see my wafu. You guys are hanging in there. Huh. I'm glad the four of you are unharmed as well. Well, it seems you've cooled your head a bit at least. <sighs> yes, I've calmed down now. At any rate, I don't believe I've introduced myself yet, have I? That is Bae, that is Waifu, that is everything. I'm Laura S. Arsaid, from the town of Lagram. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Huh. Lagram? That's down on the southeastern outskirts of the Empire, isn't it? Correct. It's an old castle town on the shores of Lake Ebel. We're connected to the rest of the country by train, but other than that, it's a fairly remote region. Hmm. That name sounds so familiar. Wait, so your father would be... Yes, my father is Viscount Arsaid, Lord of... Do you take issue with that? No, not at all. 
Now you're scared shitless, aren't you? <clears throat> Machias, was it? I can only speak for myself, but I don't feel I've ever done anything to bring shame upon myself in Adios' eyes. And I fully believe the same to be true of my father. Uh, please, I meant no offense. I'm sorry if... if, if I... Uh... Yeah, shit, son. Say, I don't believe we've been introduced. I'm Emma Milstein. Like Laura, I come from a distant region of the Empire. I was only able to attend Thor's thanks to a scholarship, in fact. It's very nice to meet you. A scholarship? Hmm, indeed. Now that you mention it, our instructor did say yours was the top score on the entrance exam. She's really smart. Same thing goes for Machias, I think. They're both smart bookworms. <sighs> to think I was outdone. By a girl, no less. That doesn't matter. Fuck you. <laughs> you must be quite the prodigy. <laughs> Maybe it seems like it now, but really, I'm not. I don't have any training in the martial arts either, so this is the weapon they recommended for me. Another Orbal Staff. Oh, cool! You got an Orbal Staff, too! Yours looks different from mine, though. Huh, so it does. I wonder if it's just cosmetic. Oh. I really do need to clear things up with her, but what do I say? Hmm? Is something the matter? We're all acquainted now. It's only proper that you introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah, okay. Don't be bitchy. Hi, I'm Miss Bitchy. Like, you're all peasants beneath me. <laughs> you're quite a babe, though. I do admit. I'm Lisa R. from Ruwer. It's a pleasure to meet almost all of you. Ouch. Uh, Elisa. Ruer, huh? What's it like living there? There's probably a new technological breakthrough every week. The Rhineford Company's based in Ruer, and they're the largest heavy industry corporation on the continent, aren't they? I suppose they are. Uh, so, hey. I guess that bow must have been in that case you had with you when we first met, right? I've never seen one like it. Is there some kind of orbital mechanism built in? There is, but I don't see how that's any of your business. Okay. Ouch. Yeah, Thoujin did. Bitchy Chan, calm down. Um, yeah. Anyone got any ideas on what to do now? We've all run into each other wandering around. How about we stick together? I think that would be for the best. It's not safe for a group of girls to travel alone. You may- You needn't be concerned about that. That's why she's Bay. Mm. Great sword. I beg your pardon? Yeah, you can beg your pardon. You can get on your knees and grovel like the dog you all, you filthy scum. Sorry. I don't mean to boast, but I'm confident my swordsmanship will be more than sufficient to protect us. For now, I think it's best to remain in separate groups. There are still two of us who remain unaccounted for. That's right. We still haven't run into that silver-haired girl. In that case, two teams means double the chance to find them. Two teams is double the coverage, and double the chance of crossing paths with our missing companions. How's that sound? I have no objections. So then, shall we be off? All right. We'll see the four of you later then. doesn't seem like she's gonna let that go, does she? It was clearly an accident. Everyone could see this. But I don't suppose it makes any difference to her. Still, is no one else worried about leaving a group of girls to fend for themselves in a place like this? 
There are four of us here. Perhaps one of us should go follow them. I don't think we have anything to worry about as long as Lore is with them. She really wears her skill on her sleeve. I doubt she drags around a sword that big just for show. It's certainly an enormous blade. I'd call it comically huge if it didn't look so dangerous. But at the end of the day, a lady is a lady. She's taller and sturdier than I am. Though I admit it's still hard to believe anyone could swing that beast of a sword. I'll bet she can whip it around without breaking a sweat. Oh? The Arside School of Swordsmanship serves as a general basis for the techniques used by knights throughout the Empire. And her father, the Viscount, is arguably the strongest swordsman in the country. People call him the Radiant Blade. I doubt any of the other students here could even stand their ground against her in combat, much less beat her. Wow. Interesting. I didn't know there were still roots of the old knightly styles alive in the Empire. You sure know a lot about this stuff, Reen. A hobby of yours? I'm a swordsman myself. I guess the lore sort of comes with the territory. Yeah, I guess. At any rate, how about we pick up the search? I'm worried about that silver-haired girl, and we still need to track down Duke Alvarea's son, too. That's true. <laughs> I couldn't care less what happened to that pompous ass. Rot <laughs> Come on now, that's no way to treat someone you just met. 